The third generation of the Trek Damani launches today with massively increased tire clearances, a revised rear ISO speed layout, integrated storage, aero optimization, and it's disc only. The original Trek Damani launched in 2012, and with that bike, Trek introduced its now signature ISO speed technology. As a brief explainer, ISOSpeed essentially detaches the seat tube from the top tube and puts a pivot where the seat cluster typically is in a bid to improve comfort when seated on the bike as it allows the seat tube to pivot kind of around the top tube. The same ISOSpeed system was ported to the Madone in 2015. The original version of the bike was remarkably comfortable for the time and it was a truly innovative piece of technology but even at the time the bike was criticized for being quite imbalanced where you had this oddly soft rear end juxtaposed with a super stiff front end. The second version of the Domani was introduced in 2016 and with that Trek developed a kind of a front version of the ISO speed system. The same double-ended fun was ported to the Madone last year, but the layout of the rear ISO speed system was changed. This new layout supposedly made the Madone more comfortable and more adjustable, and the whole thing just looking a little bit neater overall. Well now, the Domani follows suit, with this third generation adopting much of that tech we saw on last year's Madone. The USP of the Damani has always been comfort and it remains the key focus of the bike going forward with a claimed 27% increase in compliance compared to the outgoing model. It's worth stressing that this new system will only be seen on Trek's top end SLR models with the SL model, the second tier one, retaining the same system seen on the outgoing top end model. The whole system is accessed via a little panel which can be removed from the base of the top tube and then a little adjuster can be moved fore and aft along this, changing the levels of compliance, turning it from a sofa-like asphalt surfer to a super stiff crit wagon. In our experience, adjusting this does actually make a genuine difference, and if you're the sort of rider that likes to fiddle about with your bike, it's sure to delight. Each size of the frame, and the bike comes in sizes 44 all the way through to 62 centimeters, is claimed to have kind of specific levels of compliance built into each frame. So depending on the size of the frame you go for, the ISO speed system will either shrink or get larger. And likewise, the layup of the frame is also changed to suit different weights and sizes of riders. Just like the outgoing model, the front end of the bike retains the ISO speed system there, but it is not adjustable. The bike also retains the ISO core handlebars, which is essentially a fancy way of saying the bike has handlebars with rubber between the carbon. While we're on the subject of the frame, Trek has made some slight changes to its offerings in terms of geometry. Historically, Trek offered most of its road bikes in what it called its H1 and H2 fits. H1 was its more kind of aggressive, race-focused fit, and then the H2 one was a more endurance-focused one. With the Madone last year, we saw the introduction of H1.5, which, as it sounds, is pretty much a middle-of-the-road option between the two. Going forward, the new Domani will not be available in a H1 fit, and stock builds will only be available in a H2 endurance fit. Project One, which is Trek's kind of custom bike program, will allow you to get the Damani in a H1.5 fit. So if you're a racer who so happens to want a super squishy, comfortable bike, then that's your best option. In terms of numbers, the difference between a H2 and a H1.5 fit kind of adds up to be about four and a half centimeters less stack at the front end and the reach overall is a little bit shorter. Otherwise, the geometry between the outgoing bike and new one remains identical. Aero. Don't know if you've heard, but it's quite a big thing, and the Damani follows suit, taking many design aesthetic cues from the Madone. Every tube on the bike has been graced by the good hand of the Aero gods, and the bike overall, compared to the outgoing model, is claimed to be one minute faster per hour in a wind tunnel. But I think essentially what they mean is that you'll cover the same amount of distance in 59 minutes instead of an hour in a wind tunnel at an unspecified speed. Thanks, marketing. There's nothing really obvious in terms of aero shaping. There's not like crazy close clearances at the rear. There's no like cam tail tubing. It's just a more kind of organic shape overall compared to the outgoing model. And yeah, like I say, Trek claims it's gonna make the bike faster. 
The more obvious place where aero has clearly been a consideration is with the cable routing around the head tube. Unlike many bikes which are coming out just now, the new Domani is not fully integrated. What you will see on this bike is the cables routed internally all the way through the bars where they then exit. They then go through a little guide which is mounted on a headset spacer which routes them around the head tube and the steerer where they then finally enter just behind the steer tube at the back of the head tube. Honestly, the design isn't the cleanest out there, but really how much full integration matters to all of us really is quite questionable. Now, I'm a fettler. I like to fiddle around with my bikes and being able to spec this sort of stuff really matters to me. If you are totally into integration, this one's likely to horrify. But for those that want to travel or yeah, like to customize their own bikes, I think this is actually quite a good compromise. But maybe I'm wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments. The bike also ditches the weird kind of seat mass topper thing we saw with previous generations of the Damani. With the new one, it looks a little bit more like the Madone in that you have a seat mast as you did before, but instead you have a smaller seat post which goes inside this. This is supposedly more aero, more comfortable. Sure. Of greatest interest to the gravelistas amongst us is the increased clearances on the new Domani. And on the bike, it has clearances for 38 mil tires, which is seriously big for a road bike. And that is even with the kind of ISO mandated four mil of space on either side. So if you're feeling a little bit risque, you could even fit in some bigger rubber. I haven't ridden the bike, but on paper, this is actually really interesting and opens up a world of possibilities in terms of versatility. In another nod towards versatility, the bike maintains the Domani's signature hidden mudguard mounts. I love mudguards. As far as I'm concerned, a bike in the UK is not complete without mudguards. So to see what is genuinely a true super bike that will take mudguards is a huge, huge win for me, so thumbs up for Trek there. In terms of clearances, the bike will take 35 mil tires with mudguards, and all of the bikes, apart from the very top end 9.9 .9 model, will come with 32 mil tires as stock, which is seriously chunky and a really interesting move to see Trek going for such wide tires on a stock build. For mechanics, you will genuinely froth at the news that BB90 is no more with the Domani. BB90 was Trek's, and I'm gonna say it, terrible proprietary bottom bracket system, which saw bearings pressed straight into a raw carbon shell. I used to work in a Trek dealer some time ago, and it was not that uncommon for us to have to order the V2 bearings, which are essentially slightly oversized bearings to press into these shells once that carbon had worn out. It was not my favorite design in the world, and that has been replaced with the T47 threaded bottom bracket system. We've written tons about this on site, so I'm not gonna go into too many details. Check the links for that in the description. But T47 is essentially an oversized version of a BSA thread, which is your kind of traditional ISO thread. It's a step in the right direction, and it makes my heart glow. The new bike also has storage built into the down tube. This is accessed by a little kind of like plastic door with a little sliding handle, which allows you to get into a kind of puncture repair kit which comes with the bike. This is mounted on a really nice little kind of fabric roll. And again, it's just cool to see people basically using carbon to its full advantage where you can build in these sorts of things. The new Domani range starts at $2,500 or 2,300 euros for a really cool looking Tiagra based model. This then rises to a truly heady $11,300, 10,500 euros for the very top is top end SLR ETAP Red, basically rides itself build. At the time of filming this, we didn't have any UK pricing and we'll add that to the article on site. On that note, we actually do have a full range overview on site and it is worth looking through those because there's actually some quite cool builds in there. One thing I did notice that there is no one by build. The Domani with its kind of all road leadings and super wide clearances personally strikes me as the perfect bike for a one by build. But there we go, there isn't one. Maybe there's just not the demand in the market and it's just us industry insiders that are pushing those dumb drivetrains on you. So that's all we have on the new Domani. I'm really looking forward to having a ride on one and I'm particularly intrigued by those lower end models because the builds look pretty cool for a, a cheaper bike. But as always, it's not what I think that matters. It's you, our beloved Bike Radar audience. And as always, I'd love to hear any of your questions or thoughts in the comments. What do you think of the new Domani? 
Is it a step in the right direction for Trek? Or would you rather have something more aero-focused like the Madone? Do you think it should have a one by build? And how much does my t-shirt offend you? As always, please leave those thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon so whenever we upload a video, you will get a notification. Goodbye!